recording. So uh, it's just uh, the bank the person. So the streamlining global project development is winding. Um, so my name is Sean Robertson. Uh, Drupal.org slash users slash 7074. <laughs> that gives you an idea of how long I've been in the Drupal community. Uh, and it is a pair over 20 years. Uh, I got in to Drupal thanks to the Howard Dean campaign back in the day. The Dean Space Project, for anybody who knows that, later became Civic Space Labs. Uh, in fact, I was at the uh, first Civic Space Labs Developer Summit in uh, San Francisco in 2004. Uh, I have 25 years of experience in graphic design and development generally, 20 specifically in Drupal. Um, I did over 220 uh, democratic campaign sites. I've worked on countless other projects uh, from medium to really huge. Uh, World Wrestling Entertainment, uh, I was the lead backend developer on three rebuilds of their main site which were million dollar jobs apiece. Uh, we're talking a team of, at, at the peak on each of those projects, it was about 15 people. Not all the devs, but, but uh, really big teams, but you know, big projects running in agile, a lot of devs, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, it was after that job, that I found Lando, and I started recommending that everywhere I went. Um, and so Teach for America is an example of that. Uh, uh, my last job uh, was a company called Center Tech, and we did websites for hospital systems, uh, public facing sites. And so I did a whole mess of conversions from uh, basic Docker to land mm -hmm. and uh, get this on to you. It's all my doctor. I'm going to take off my pantheon here for a moment <laughs> and uh, show my, uh, show my uh, land up here. Uh -huh. And uh, incidentally, I also came with swag. Ooh. They actually shipped me a whole bag full of swag. So uh, that will be up here after the presentation. I even got a couple of t-shirts, so if anybody wants some of this stuff, it's here. Um, these little things, all kinds of good, all kinds of goodies. Um, so, so uh, when local dev strikes back, of course, Lando being named after Lando racing and I had to use all the mess of Star Wars references mm -hmm. but keep an eye out for the joke at the end <laughs> um, so the issue with local development typically has been it's difficult to set up um, when I started at door three uh, back in 2011 um, they gave me a Windows machine for the first couple weeks and my Mac was on order I, I pulled a company record I got a local dev environment up and running on Windows before lunch and was coding after lunch. <laughs> I don't think anybody else there had ever even gotten that first day. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I have a great experience dealing with oddities around that kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, when I got the Mac, I had to do it all over again. Um, but the thing is, you know, each dev has to repeat that whole process. So there's a learning curve. Uh, there is, especially when you're talking. Uh, junior developers, there's a lot of hand um, and And every time you spin up a new project, you got to either add a virtual host or you're, even if you're using uh, Docker or Vagrant or whatever it is, you, know, you can run into port collisions, all kinds of things like that. And then the biggest one. Well, it worked on my machine. Why doesn't it work on the server? <laughs> I think everybody in this room has probably heard some ver variation of that. Um, and then, of course, you know, when I was at Door 3, we had a couple guys on Windows, we had a couple guys that had pure Linux boxes, and then a few of us on Macs. So there's variations across all of that. Um, and 
Right. So that just becomes a real bear of support when you need somebody that actually knows DevOps really well and knows the different platforms really well. And that's a hard, it's kind of a rare creature. Um, so we can beat the empire. And so Lando is fully open source. Uh, I think it's, uh, let me go back to the first slide. Yep. So Lando.dev, docs.lando.dev is a really good getting started guide. Um, and so it's fully open source. It's all on GitHub. Um, they, they have a Slack channel as well. Um, and uh, in fact, I, the founder of the project took me out for drinks when he was in New York the last time because they did so much volunteer support in the Slack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's based on Docker Compose. Uh, and written in basically in JavaScript prompts. Um, if you're familiar with uh, JavaScript stuff, but it's, it's kind of neither here nor there unless you want to get involved in development. Um, but uh, one of the cool things is uh, it has this concept of recipes. Um, so you can, and I was going to actually do a demo of this, but since I can't get my laptop to work with that TV for a demo, but, but you can run Lando in it. In, in a directory, use your existing code base, and then choose a recipe. So it could be, for example, Pantheon, that I was just wearing, and I happen to love them, or Acquia, and I love them as well for different reasons. Um, and you know, and then there's more generic, uh, like Drupal eight, nine, uh, also a mean stack. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of different stacks for even non beautiful stuff. I think there's a WordPress one. Um, and basically, you know, especially with the, the hosting related uh, recipes, it actually mimics the entire server architecture from hosting. Mm -hmm. So if I stand up an Acquia site, I'm getting basically the exact same stuff that Acquia uses on my wall. And, you know, or it's Pantheon. I get the same stuff that Pantheon uses. Memcache and Aretas, Cache, all of that stuff. So I, I have a complete copy of what's on the production environment. Um, and it's pretty easy to use command line methods. Uh, basically, you know, Lando in it just to create it. Uh, you know, if you've already got it, Set up, and it's, you know, it's just a, it creates a, a, a YAML file that lives in your in your code repository. It just sits there alongside your code, and so when a new dev comes on a team, he installs Lando. The installer will also install Docker. You can use Docker on that, and then all the dev has to do is go into the directory and run Lando start, and it'll it'll pull all the images, build everything, and then. It comes up, gives you the URLs, and you can just pull it up and graph it. And the way it's designed is that it has a, uh, a proxy that sits in front of it. So you can have several sites running at the same time and no port glitches. And uh, I, I mean, I've, I've had as many as five or six sites running simultaneously, and it bounces back and forth between projects. If you've ever done agency work, you know how that is. Um, and then there's integration with third party tools. So, uh, for example, Terminus is built into the Pantheon recipe, ACLI is built into the Aquaman recipe, um, and of course, Drush, uh, or in the case of WordPress, you have know, WPCLI. Um, all of that is included in the stack. So you don't have to go and find all these parts. They're just there. And then you do have to do some configuration like setting up your keys. Uh, you know, if you've got your terminus key, you have to put that in. Uh, but once you've done it once, if you've got five Pantheon sites and you're all the same Pantheon, you're the same user for all of them. All you do is set up the key once and it'll work across all because it, it stores it in a shared key repository. Um, and then from there, you know, so you Lando start, Lando stop, it shuts down just that site, 
Lando Power Off will shut down all of your Lando instances. So if you've got, like I was mentioning, five or six sites running at once and you just want to stop them all, Lando <coughs> Power Off will shut them all off. And then all you do is run Lando Start, restart the general with that. Um, and then uh, Lando Rebuild, uh, which really only comes up uh, if you've made configuration changes to, to uh, the Lando file. Um, it doesn't, you don't normally have to do that, but um, then you can get into some pretty advanced stuff. Um, so if you're familiar with Docker Compose, you know, you can do things like, uh, you can basically create a custom service uh, that lives alongside your Lando services and create a custom entry point um, just as you would with, with basic Docker Compose. It's, it's all using the same language. Um, and you can also add features to individual services as needed. Um, for example, uh, I have added PHP to a node service and vice versa. Um, I have added uh, uh, the Apache headers uh, module. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things, that, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, it's a little advanced, but if you've got a, a dev who knows Linux pretty well, you know, knows app get and stuff like that, I mean, it's really because you have within within a given service, you can add runs root. Uh, you have, basically, there are there are events we call event hooks, where it'll run certain things at certain points in in the build process. When you run Lando rebuild, it'll you know, like the run, the build is root, run is root, and again, it's, it'll, there's, it's in the documentation, it'll tell you exactly when each one runs. Um, and you can do some pretty neat things. Uh, there's, there's this uh, concept called tooling, um, and there, there's built-in tools in Lando um, that are just there, you know, especially like on, uh, Aquia and Pantheon, you've got a Wango pull command, um, and that will use either Terminus or ACLI, depending on which, and it'll ask you whether you want to pull, you know, what environment you want to pull the code from, just choose none, because you've already got the code locally, presumably, and you can choose which environment to pull the database from, which environment to pull files from, and it'll bring it all down. And uh, so if you've got a you know, your client has made a whole ton of content changes on the production site, you're working on dev code, you can pull the database and files from production and have a local mirror of your, of your live site. Um, but you can override that tooling and you can add your own. Um, so for example, uh, one thing that I do very often, uh, we have a lot of sites that run Gulp uh, for doing SAS, so compiled CSS. And so, you know, or it could be node NPM, you know, scripts. So you can create tooling for, say, uh, build and watch. And you can tell it which environment, which uh, service it's going to run that on. And then what the command is, so, and then you can also tell what directory to run it in. So, for example, I've got a theme that's running Gulp, and and uh, so I've got I, I've added a node service for just for this purpose. For, so when I add tooling, I say that um, I want to add build and watch commands on the node service, and they're going to run inside of the theme directory, and then the command is just like gulp and gulp watch. Mm -hmm. And and so then what you what you can do is just run Lando build, and it'll it'll go in there and build all your all your CSS, uh, and you can do the same with the watch command, and, and it'll just keep watching any, for any file changes you make. Um, and it also has a pretty easy integration with Xdebug. Uh, there's a 
at the top of a Wando file, there's a, uh, uh, a config section where you can set things like what your Docker root is and, and that kind of stuff. But you can also say xdebug colon uh, build and I build and debug. I forget what the for the xdebug three is, but, but you can you can set that so that when you run Wando rebuild, xdebug will be available. And then you can just connect to it, whatever your IDE is. Um, and, you know, this is really super helpful for, for back end developers. Uh, there's, you know, tells you the XDBot. But um, the, just, you know, the ability to add your own tooling. Uh, then you can also override, for example, the Wando pull command. Um, in some cases, I've overridden that. To, because we had sort of a custom setup that, that we were using on some sites. So, you know, Lando pull already exists. If you define it in your tooling, it'll just override it and replace it with whatever you want it to do. So you can you can replace any of the existing uh, tools that it has available. Um, and uh, this was going to include a live demo, but. Uh, since uh, that didn't quite work. <laughs> um, but to show you, this is, this is an example of running Wando in it, um, source being GitHub repo, and the recipe is Pantheon. And then I, I have said, which repo, which Pantheon account, which site, and, and by the way, the, the site, it'll actually give you the options of all what's available. And then hit enter, and it, it goes ahead and connects and pulls everything down. So if you do a Lando in, in a blank directory, you can actually pull the whole thing straight from, straight from Pantheon. Um, it'll, it'll bring down everything. Um, and then, uh, that's basically what you end up with when it's done. And it'll show you, this is an old version of, of Lando, but it'll show you, uh, it'll actually list out all of the URLs available to you. And what it does is it uses a, uh, uh, so lndo.site, and it, it'll use whatever your site name is .lmdo.site. You can also access it through local host given the specific IP or, uh, port rather if you want. But um, but it makes it really easy to just spin stuff up locally and, and uh, you know it's you kinda of don't even have to think about it. It really just works. Um, but um, let's see. So that's me again, uh, the docs. Anybody spot the joke? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah. Wrong, wrong, uh, wrong uh, universe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Trekkie, so yeah. I had to, had to throw that in there. Um, I guess uh, I can open it up to questions if anybody's got it. Yeah, go for it. What's your opinion of Lando versus DDEV versus Cloud IDE? I don't know if you're familiar with that, with Cloud IDE. Uh, I have a very minimal familiarity with it. Um, I've not really used it. Um, I looked into it once because it was, I knew it was going to come up in an interview. <laughs> <laughs> but what about DDEV? DDEV, I've not really used, but it is somewhat similar. Yeah, I hear um, but some it, people swear by DDEV, I've only ever used one go. Yeah, wonder, I, you know, it's, it's really probably good. sort of a matter of preference. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think Lando predates DDEV, and, and I just found it first. Um, gotcha. I think it's kind of one of those things. You know, it's like the whole Vim versus Emacs today. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, you know... It, it all kind of comes down to if, if I inherited a project that was already using DDEV, I mean, I could run that DDEV runs on Docker too, so it, it, it kind of doesn't matter. I um, think maybe treating Lando as a wrapper or whatever. 
you can have folks working with the equity for Lando on that same project. Yes, yeah, you can do that too. Um, and, and maybe you can kind of tie more things together in a, in a, in a pretty way. Whereas you can do everything you want to do with Docker, of course. Lando yeah. makes it pretty. Well, I mean, it, it kind of is. My preference is to have every dev using the same tools. Um, but if, if there's somebody who's really wedded to a specific tool that was already in there, I mean, okay. But I'm going to be watching you like a hawk, make sure you don't have stuff that, that works or one doesn't work on the other. Um, I think Lando is really good because, of, especially because of the recipes. And I know that uh, Aqua is pretty heavily used in ghost stuff. Um, but even, you know, you could actually mimic. Uh, an AWS environment, if you want, um, and you know, I mean, it's, the whole idea is extremely customizable. You can basically replicate exactly what's on your server if you really, really need to, uh, whether it's on a, a platform as a service or or your own setup. I mean, obviously, if it's your own setup, you get a little more involved to do that. But you can't do that. Uh, cloud IDE also isn't Fedrant yet, so if you intend to use that for the client, then there may be a limitation. Oh, Cloud IDE is not Fedrant. No. Yeah, so we uh, we work with Acquia, but that was a huge limitation for us, so we couldn't use it. Is there is. Eliminate one. And also, uh -oh. it doesn't support my design. Oh, uh, Cloud IDE. Yeah, Cloud IDE is. Uh, I mean, we had issues. Uh, like, we had a microset architecture, and it's just, Using How many of you actually use multi sites? Uh, so we have like around seven sites. Yes. You can do that in, in uh, Lando. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's documentation for it. it it's like a little bit more, more set up, but you know, it's, not, it's actually not hard. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really simple because, um, and I'm just picking a bit more question. Lando versus DJ. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we use Docs. We use Docs and, and uh, Lando. Like what, what we found was Lando has better support community uh, compared to the other tools. Compared to DJ? I'm not sure about DJ. Let's like okay. use Docs. Okay. And, and the, the, the problem was when, when I, I mean, Here's the issue right there. When M1 chip is like at the M1, like there are big changes in the by default, and docs are like it broken. You didn't have the immediate support. Okay. Whereas Lando, there is a big Yeah. So, mm. my, so, my last company mentioned we migrated a bunch of stuff to Lando. They had been using docs, and uh, it became a problem. Um, especially working on multiple sites at once. He, he, had, he had to shut one off and start the next one. Mm -hmm. um, and Lando handles all that virtual import mapping automatically. So that was a really big win. The devs had to keep you know, spinning up and spinning down every time they had to work on a ticket for another project. And that was just infuriating. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my boss at the time, who's actually here at this convention, uh, he's, speak, he's speaking tomorrow um, uh, on the, uh, the US web design, I forget what it's called. Um, but uh, he hired me explicitly because of, well, in addition to my knowledge of Drupal, but also because I had a real strong knowledge of Lambda. So we migrated everything across that company into Lambda. And it, it saved us a lot of headaches. Um, and as to the community, um, I can vouch for that. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that I have had a question and had to drop into their Slack channel and uh, and ask, and we got an answer back pretty quickly. Um, one of the head Pantheon guys is in there. Um, I think he actually works for them now. I think he moved, uh, but he was in there all the time. And he can answer a lot of Pantheon related questions too. So he's he's a really Incredible resource in there, um, but uh, you know, and then I've also answered a lot of questions in there, and I'm pretty much in I'm in that channel all the time. And, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to show you all that, with, except for the connections. <laughs> but um, any other questions? 
mentioned somebody. It was you. It was you. Somebody mentioned when Silicon came on, M1, M1, and M2, that yeah. Lambda was really quick to follow. Yeah, they 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 picked that up fairly quickly. Uh, I mean, there was a little bit of lag, of course, but I'm still working with. I found that it was always preferring the Intel build of the database server. Uh, so I'd use the Pantheon recipe database. Yeah, you know, it's called Pantheon database. And that would happen to pull the right line. Even though yeah. I didn't use the Pantheon recipe. Pantheon recipe uses MariaDB. Yeah. Mm. But it's so I wonder if that one. makes a difference. Something mm. about it would you know, pick the right one for the right machine. Yeah. I, 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 would, just, I would just add really quickly that um, the, uh, no, I think the Pantheon recipe does have like an ARM, which is the Apple Silicon based uh, database container, but like, the core Lando database service does not have an ARM right. image yet, but that's something that like, kind of like, yeah. yeah, and you know, I mean, you could always help create a patch for it if you, you, know, you know how to do that. Um, and it's all open source. Uh, it's GitHub. Is it dot com slash Lando slash Lando or, or just slash Lando? They've got they've split the project out into multiple repos now. But uh, if you go to GitHub dot com slash Lando, you can you can find all all of the parts. I'm just curious, you guys are losing me. Why does the processor make a difference, Intel versus ARM? Why? Because the because the actual binaries are compiled based on the system architecture. Oh. So, like when you pull a Debian package, so you know because this is all almost all of these are based around Ubuntu. Right. So when you pull the, the Debian packages, you know, through AppGet, you know, it's it's going to get the Correct binary for your system. Mm. Um, you know, there, there are pre-compiled binaries that are packaged into releases that go into the, uh, you know, the, the project repositories, and, and then it's supposed to pull the correct one based on, on what the system architecture is. Yeah, and right, right now, if you're if you're on like a, if you're on an ARM machine and you're using uh, a Docker desktop. Pulls down like an Intel image, or we'll like Docker desktop will try to emulate it. Oh, I think the most recent recent release of using Rosetta, which is like Max, like built in, uh, like Intel emulator, and it's it works pretty good. Um, it's a little bit slower as you would imagine. Yeah, sure. you would definitely get a performance hit from that uh, anytime you're running an emulator, and and really you're running an emulator and of an emulator, and basically you know, Docker is slow enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for that, I always find that. <clears throat> I don't know the magic behind it, but you take Pantheon's recipe, it'll give you the variety that you're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting solution. But I think Lando 4 would come out this. Yeah, that, so that is a work in progress it. right now. Um, the So the underlying initial architecture changes, splitting it out into separate repositories, has been done in the 3.x branch. Uh, that was preparation for Lando 4, as I understand it. I don't know when that's coming out, but I, I also heard soonish. By the way, nice esteemed shirt. I'll be, wear, I'll be wearing mine tomorrow. <laughs> do you typically recommend to update to the latest Lando version when it comes out, or do you uh, have a version you like? I try to do it not too long after, but. I watch their Slack channel like a hawk to make sure nothing's going wrong with it. Because mm -hmm. there have been a couple of reasons that ended up having some big issues. Uh, and so, you know, if I'm the, I'm the senior dev in a company, I tell all the other devs, hold off until I've tested it. And, and I usually you know, watch their Slack for a few days, see what starts pouring, and watch their issue queue. Um, and then, if that looks okay, I'll give it a try myself. And by the way, anytime that you upgrade Lando, you, you should also run Lando rebuild on all of your sites. Uh, there are sometimes changes in the way that will affect that. But then, once having done that, um, you know, if, if it passes my test, then I tell all the other guys something. That was my second question, actually. That rebuild function, is that basically the same thing as? Like destroy and then no. start. So what rebuild does is 
it it basically rebuilds the containers, uh, and it'll pull updated images, but it won't destroy any of your data. So your database will be kept intact. Gotcha. If you do a Lando destroy, you will lose your data. So uh, anytime you make changes to your Lando file, you should use that rebuild function? There is a, so you can update Thule without doing a rebuild. Is that just, it, it reads that every time you run your, whatever the tool is, you know, you know like when I was talking about Lando build, Lando watch. Oh. Like I can change those commands around and I don't have to do a rebuild. But anything that's up in the config or the services section, that requires a rebuild. Gotcha. Because it's going to basically create a new image or... Yeah, it'll, it updates, you know, it, 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 you know you, like if you change your node version, for example, it'll have to pull an updated Docker image. Gotcha. So that, that requires a rebuild. Do you know of any good resources for creating the tools? Are there any... Like, is uh, it just the, doc, the Lando site, or are there other communities that share their tools and stuff like well, that? Well, it's really, it's, so all the, all those tool commands do is reference a command that you have inside of your service. So whatever tooling you have on your site, for example, I was talking about running a gulp thing, that, that lives in your theme, that's already just part of the site. All you're doing is telling Lando where to find it, how to run it. Okay. Um, and that is all documented on the site. Uh, it's, it's, they've got pretty good documentation around that stuff. Cool. Thanks. Um, actually, I can. I can I'll pull say it. On the, the updating thing, it's probably configurable, but Lando is really obnoxious when it wants you to update. Oh, really? Yes. It's yeah. like massive update yeah. now messages yeah. every time you run a command. Oh, true. So. true. <laughs> Yeah, so my glasses on. This is really awkward because uh, I can't find the can't find a cursor. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that shows that the actual shows proper address that's just one. And you don't realize that I'm trying to There it is. Okay, found it. Like you run Lando in it very funny. 40 minutes or one hour, and then you realize that, oh, it's not working. Different patients? Yeah, it's five patients. That's wrong times I don't want that. Well, let's go to getting started. I think that's probably the best place to go. Um, and then we'll go to config. Oh, this is awkward as heck. I want the I want the more uh, detailed. Uh, I got this pack here. Yeah, it's uh, tool. There we go. So. This kind of shows you, and this is an example of just one, and you know, it's telling you, you know, this is what you got your service, you have a description, you can tell it the directory that it's going to run it in, and then the actual command, you can tell it to the new as a user, you can even give it options that you can actually input options if you want. Um, uh, and there are some examples here. Uh, yeah, you, you can you can get pretty pretty uh, detailed with this stuff if you want to. I don't like the fact that this is halfway off the screen. Mm -hmm. But um, let's go to recipes. Um, so, as you can see, you've got Aquia, Pantheon. They added a, a recipe for platform.sh if anybody uses that. I don't know if the government has approved that, but but then you've got 
PHP frameworks and just generic stacks. Yeah, uh, we're yet. Yeah. Oh, close, but um, so let's just have a look. For example, at we'll look at the Drupal one. Um, uh, I wanted to see where it would actually give me the config. Yeah, this is going to be impossible because I can't see off the side of the screen. <laughs> but anyway, as you can tell, the docs are pretty pretty thorough. So you know, anything you can think you want to do, they probably describe it somewhere. <clears throat> if they haven't, you can always ask in the Slack. Yeah, they created it. Yeah, so, they're great. Yeah. If you're going to go on the Slack, I'd recommend that you go actually from the Lando Slack and yeah. not in the Lando channel in the Drupal Slack. Right, yeah, you want people in there, but... You want to go on, on theirs, right, because they're... Their people are actually in their own, um, and uh, it's it's from the from the docs page. I think it's linked in there somewhere. Let's go back. Oops. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Under support here, uh, this is a link to their to their Slack right here, mm. and yeah. So, but it's there. Oh, did that open a new tab? I think it did. <coughs> yeah. Ah, I can't remember how to switch tabs on it. Oh God! <laughs> oh, that's nothing. <laughs> you should see my laptop. I'll show it to you if you want to come up here. I've got well, I can't even switch the tab. Um, it's good. Let's see. Tab. Select previous tab. Command option tab. Shift option tab, sorry. Shift. Shift control tab. There we go, got it. Um, but yeah, it's so uh, it's right there in the in the footer. But um, yeah, their their own people are active in there. Um, they also have a contributors channel if you want to get involved in, in actually helping build it. And they have uh, an evangelist channel, which is kind of what I'm doing today. Uh, and uh, you know, so they they have like their their slide deck template and stuff like that, and they, and they, they can write me resources if you want to present on it, any, any of that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, they're they're really great. And there's, there's a pretty good number of people in there, and they're fairly active. I will tell you that it is dead on weekends. So if you're working on weekends, which I often am. You might have to wait till Monday to get an answer. Mm -hmm. We'll get an answer from you on weekend. <laughs> yeah, you might actually. It's entirely possible. I'm Sean R in there, by the way. S E A N R. I, I use that across the entire Slack Drupal ecosystem. Um, so if you ever want to reach out to me, I'm on, on the Drupal Slack, I'm in the Twig Slack. Uh, just a fun factoid I am the reason the Twig landed in Drupal. Because wow. I was at DrupalCon Denver, and we had a what we call core we a series of sessions called core conversations. One of them was on the front end, and and it kind of started as a great session about the PHP template framework. So I got up. I said, "Well, we're using Symfony now in Drupal 8. There's an associated template engine called Twig. Why don't we use that?" <laughs> and then I posted it in in the there was a as a result of that session, there was an issue created on Drupal.org, and I had re you know, repeated my comment in there. And then I got waylaid into this massive project, so I never contributed a lot of code to it. I made a bunch of work for other people. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But I will tell you, there are a lot of people who are very happy about that. 